I, I'm going to uh, bring you a message this evening. Uh, I want you to give me your attention uh, briefly, very briefly, to the point, and I'm going to give you some good practical advice. Um, <coughs> Christian, a Christian's Christmas. A Christian's Christmas. This time of year, very exciting. For a lot of people, very sad for a lot of people. Uh, but we as Bible believers take Christmas as we do everything else. Uh, through the lens of the Word of God, no other. Uh, as in everything, there's ditches on both sides of the road. Tonight, we're going to learn some things. Uh, the word Christmas itself began as a mass, Christ's mass, a mass to honor Christ. You see a lot of places where they mark out the Christ and put Xmas. Really, it'd be a lot better if you mark out the Mass and just leave the Christ. Amen? And we'll, we'll learn a little bit tonight and help you. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, look at verse number 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race, that's all of us, run a race for Jesus, run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Now, I want you, he's talking about a man running a race, and in everything that man does, he's this. These little words here jumped out at me, and I think they are very much overlooked in the average Christian's life. Look at the middle of verse 25. He said, every man that striveth for the mastery, look at these words, is temperate in all things. Temperate. Temperance means self-control, don't go overboard in anything. Temperate in all things. So this evening, let's talk about it just, just a little bit. Now, uh, I, as I... Don't laugh. I, I, my, my birthday was a couple weeks ago. I got tired of all the smart Alec comments I got. And uh, I thought, well, I'm getting old. I might as well use my uh, oldness <laughs> and experience to help younger people. And, and that's what it should be. When I was a young preacher, I challenged people, and, and I still do all that. But I think now, as I, as I do get older, maybe I can help you not make some of the mistakes that I made. And I hope that us older people can tell you younger people that our mistakes would not be stumbling stones for you, but stepping stones so that you could follow and not make the same mistake. If somebody older than you makes a mistake, learn from their mistake and don't make the same mistake they made. So I'm going to try to help you with that just a little bit tonight. And uh, some of you, your kids are still small and you got kids at home. And uh, let's, let's look at a, a Christian's view of Christmas. Number one, I want to say three things about it tonight. Number one is stay balanced. Stay balanced. The Bible said we're to be temperate in all things. Stay balanced in your beliefs, in your practices, and everything. Uh, Christmas is, is a time uh, when, uh, and, and let me just explain what I'm talking about this evening. There are a lot of people, Christian people, Christian groups, uh, preachers, even Baptist churches, other denominations that are staunch enemies of any uh, celebration of Christmas at all. Uh, the birth of Jesus, mention it, flowers, light. You would not believe, we will get, we will get comments and emails and uh, uh, criticizing us for having red flowers in our church. And they believe that if we have these lights in here, we are pagans and we're participating in an occult pagan holiday and they'll go back and they'll do all the research of the pagan roots of Christmas. And those people, they honestly think we're so dumb that we don't already know all that. They, they, they think for granted. I'll tell you what people like that are. Uh, uh, somebody wrote in last year and said, I cannot believe that you have a wreath in your church. Oh, it didn't matter if nobody got saved that morning, but bless God, you better not have that ungodly wreath 
in your church. Now, people like that are searching for something to make them feel right. And the Jehovah Witnesses are the outstanding characters in that. They celebrate no Christmas at all, no birth of Jesus, no manger, no no. If you mention it, you better not buy my kids a gift. We won't take it. You take that back. We'll not, we won't believe in it at all. And it's all of the devil and, and, and everything like that. Now, uh, those uh, people like that don't really have much and don't really have no uh, uh, conviction or, or doctrine or anything. So they pick out something like that and say, oh, I traced it back to heathen origin, so you're a heathen if you mention it. And they do that because of their immaturity and their ignorance. We all know the, we all know the heathen origins of, the, of trees and, and, and all that kind of stuff. We all know, uh, we all know the heathen origins. We all know that the winter solstice comes on December the 21st. I knew that 35 years ago I preached that. And the winter solstice means the shortest day of the year is about the late December the 21st. 22nd, third, long in there, shortest day of the year, and they believe the sun, S-U-N, died. And the old pagan heathen back in the Old Testament time, uh, right then the days become a little longer. And the days in the very end of December, January the 1st, started getting longer, and the sun's rays started getting stronger. So they said, he's come back. The sun has been reborn. It's the birthday of the sun, S-U-N. So when Christianity uh, came and Jesus came, they, the Catholic Church and them sort of married each other and the worldly practices of the Old Testament, and they said, let's just be the, be the birthday of the Son, the S-O-N. And that's where December 21st, 5th comes from. We all know Jesus wasn't born on December the 25th. It ain't, I mean, he wasn't born ain't, wasn't nowhere near close. We got that. We understand that. Don't think, oh, well, you poor, dumb people don't understand you're worse than a pagan holiday. I want to tell you something tonight. We do understand the pagan roots of, of, of December 25th. We do understand that. We also understand that when, uh, when, you, when you make a god out of something or worship anything but the Lord, you're an idol. We understand that. We got it down pat. Please don't write me letters and, uh, and say, you ignorant people don't even understand that Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. We know that. Got that. However, we also know that in the Bible, they did, the Lord did mention the birth of Jesus many, many times, and the angel did appear to the shepherds in the sky and did say, Fear not, behold, I bring good tidings of great joy and made it a wonderful occasion when the Savior come into the world. We do realize tonight that there is not one verse of Scripture in that Bible that tells you that you're supposed to celebrate the birth of Jesus every year. We know that. We also know that there is not one verse of Scripture in that Bible that forbids us to just shout and say a hallelujah, wonderful time that God sent His Son into this world in a manger and He grew up and died for our sin and was put in the grave and got up the third day not a verse says we can't do that. If we want to do it 365 days a year, we have that right. Say amen right there. There are actually preachers that think it's wrong for a preacher to preach on the resurrection on Easter Sunday. I've heard them say it. They say, I ain't going to preach on the resurrection. I'm not falling into that pagan trap. Listen, nut. Listen, all you nuts. That like I don't want them nuts like to listen to me, but all, you know I'm telling you there is nothing that says I can't preach on the resurrection ever Sunday if I want to. Let me show you something. There is nothing sinful about a tree with lights on it. Anything sinful about that? Well, those pagans. I don't care what the pagans did. I care what my grandpa and grandma did up in the mountains 50 years ago. And those old people that lived up in the mountains, up in the mountains of Kentucky and West Virginia, and, the mountain, and they worked hard all year. And they got together on, the, in the, on the December the 24th and 5th, and all they talked about was the Lord coming and worshipped Him and set food on the table. And they said, you know what? The wise men gave gifts to Jesus, and I'm going to give you this gift in honor of Him. That's what I'm talking about. 
But there ain't nothing wrong with that. And if you say there's something wrong with that, you are a religious hypocrite. You are a person searching for something to make you feel like you're more spiritual than all that. Now, if you don't want to do it, there's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, but I'm telling you, if I want to wrap you up a gift and give it to you any day of the year, there is not one verse of Scripture against that. You say, but you're participating. I ain't participating in nothing. See them trees? They're there in July. July. Man, preached told me one time, I was out preaching, and said, uh, out, out in Texas somewhere, he said, you've got a bell bush in your house. I said, well, I reckon. I, I said, i got a tree in my living room. It's like that, and we keep lights on it 12 months a year. Is that wrong? Is that a sin? He said, I wouldn't have one of my, we had lights around the porch. It's like preachers who think it's wrong to have a TV and have the Internet. Good Lord, people. The Internet is 10 million times worse than TV. Amen? And I don't, and either one of them can be a sin. The, either one of them. We don't bow down. Now, you say, well, Brother Danny, what's right and what's wrong? What's wrong is against Scripture. If you say there's a fat man who flies through the air and goes to see everybody in the world in one night, then you've crossed into another area. Amen? Then we got something to say. Because you say, well, what does the Bible say? Thou shalt not bear false witness. You're lying. Every year I make people mad when I say there ain't no Santa Claus. People, ah, don't tell him, don't let him hear that. Don't let him hear that. How could you do that? You're a preacher. You ruined it for my little darling. Listen, the truth ain't going to hurt nobody. They don't care where it comes from as long as they get it. I'm telling you, I ain't going to let some guy get the glory from me buying my kids' presents and I pay for them. And I pay all the money. And then they're going to go thank some guy that ain't never done a day's work in his life. Ain't got no elves. Ain't got no sleigh. Can't fly. He he don't know what you're thinking. He don't know when you're sleeping, when you're awake. There ain't no such person as Santa Claus. He's of the devil. Now, see, I'm keeping you balanced now. I'm helping you stay balanced. You got it? You know what that is? Good, sound, fundamental Bible teaching, preaching. If something crosses the Scripture, we're out. Same way as Easter. We believe the Lord got up from the dead. We can do it every Sunday if we want to and preach about it and shout about it. Easter Bunny, cross the line. Cross the line, Easter Bunny. He's out. He's of the devil. Throw him out in the trash. No Easter Bunny. No such thing as Santa Claus. No elves unless they're demons. You can rearrange them letters of Santa, you know. And look what you got, Satan. I, I tell you, I, 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 he gets the glory. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He knows everybody. He knows. He's trying to take the place of Jesus, and he's a liar, and we preach against him. So you got it? You got it. Now, if you got somebody in your family that says, you're wicked because you give your kids presents on December 25th, I'll just laugh at them and pray for the feeble-minded and comfort people like that. They're, they're really they're slow. They're slow in their thinking, so just pray for them. Just pray for them. If you want to give me presents any day of the year, I'll take them. I'm short on presents. I really am. I'm pitiful. I, I'm telling you tonight, uh, stay balanced. Stay balanced. Stay balanced. Decorations against Scripture, wrong. That's why we don't have blonde-headed girl angels in our Christmas play, there ain't no such thing. Every angel in the Bible appears as a young male. Got it? Amen. That's right. If I want to put lights on my house, I'll do it, and it ain't none of your business. If you want to do it, it ain't none of your neighbor's business. If you tell your kids there's a Santa Claus, you're lying. Stay balanced. Can you hear you? One lady said, I cannot believe you. I cannot. You've ruined Christmas. Oh, it don't matter. They don't care. You remember, I remember the, the closest I ever thought, come to believing in Santa Claus, I was about five years old and uh, six, six, maybe six, and they'd tell me, and I had my doubts about it anyway. And mom left Santa Claus some uh, fruit cake 
and coffee or something. And they said, now we're going to leave it right here on this table and, uh, and, and we'll see if he eats it tonight when he comes to bring y'all's present. And they'd try to make us go to bed. and We'd stay up to night, 2 o'clock in the morning. We, you can't go to sleep on Christmas Eve. You know how it was when you was little. And we'd be laying in there and couldn't go to sleep. The next morning, we jumped up and run in there. And sure enough, you know, Daddy went in there and he'd, he'd cut about half of it off and drunk the coffee. And I thought, and for a split second, I thought, you reckon he really did come in here and do that? But everything in me was saying, no, you good tonight. You know nobody came. He went even got a chimney. How'd he get in here? I mean, I remember, <laughs> I remember thinking, that guy, how, how does he go to everybody's house? And you know what really sealed it was when we'd, every year we'd wind up finding our presents. We go, and I, I, one night we went to this man's house and backed up in the driveway. <laughs> she does it too, huh? And, uh, and she, we backed up in this guy's driveway, and Daddy said, now y'all stay in the car. And, and the trunk was up like this, and, you know, we as kids was looking out through that little hole in the, where the trunk is raised through the back window, and I saw him pull, bringing my bicycles out of that guy's basement and putting them in the trunk and everything. And, of course, then I was, I was seven or eight or nine then, I thought, I'm just going to have to play along with this and act like I didn't see it because I didn't want to spoil it for my mom and dad, uh, you know. But, I mean, you know, you ain't, you ain't going to hurt them kids' feelings by telling them the truth. Tell them there's no such thing as Santa Claus. Tell them the reason we give gifts is because the wise men brought gifts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, if you really want to be scriptural about it, give him your gift. What are you getting the Lord this year? Amen. Give him. That's why we take up money for the bus kid. Sometimes we think, hey, let's do without a little bit and give it to somebody else. If I want to give, if I want to give somebody a gift in honor of the Lord coming to this, then that's fine. Nothing scriptural against that. All right, quickly. Number two. Number two. Here's some good Christmas advice. Don't overspend. Now, I'm telling you this because I'm older than a lot of y'all in here. Don't overspend. I used to get caught up in Christmas when I was about 30, 34, 3, 4, 5 years old. And everybody be getting stuff and everybody be getting stuff. And the kids be saying they're getting this. And something always comes out real popular. Baby do little or do a lot or something. And, and, and baby do do or baby eat do do or something. I shouldn't say that. Uh, they, they always have some kind of special. They always have come some big something or another invented right before Christmas. It cost you a fortune. And all the kids love it and all the kids go wild. And I remember when my kids was little, uh, when, when Carrie was just real little, uh, four or five years old, I remember doing this. And I'm giving you some good advice. I remember it get about the middle of December, and I thought, man, I've, I've got to get it. I've just, I've got And I'd go out and I'd get something, and I'd buy it, and I'd let my house payment go on, in December. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'll let my house payment go, buy everybody a big Christmas present, and then I'll have catch up in January and February. Let me tell you this, this evening, that's a big mistake. You know when I caught up? About June. Lots of reasons you don't get caught up. If you let December's bills go to buy Christmas, bad weather hits, sickness hits, snow days come, and for some reason it ain't near as easy to get caught up as you think it is. So some of the best advice I could give you all tonight would be stay within your budget. Stay within your means. Don't go crazy. Don't buy stuff you can't afford. Don't go in debt for Christmas. You know what we used to do? Well, I used to sit down. After I learned better, I'd sit down. And I remember lots of Christmases when I would have, I'd say I got $200. And we'd have eight or ten people in the family to buy for Mom, dad, sister, uh, and, and you figure out 10 people, $200, $20 each. $20 each. If you got $500 for Christmas and eight people in your family, somebody tell me how much you can spend on each one of them. $40, right. Five eighths are 40. Or five, four eighths, five eighths are 40, right? Is that right? Eight, that ain't right. I didn't think that sound right. Four hundred dollars, eight people. That's ten. That's ten. I usually beat y'all standing on my feet. Just a second. 
if you got, how much money did I say to start with? Okay, so you got $500, you got uh, eight people, $60, there you go, six, eight, 48, and somebody gets a little more with tax, $62, <laughs> and, and you go out and you get in a fight, and you're in Walmart, and you say, oh, mama would like to have one of those electric heaters, that's $72. Well, I know, but what we spent last year on mama wasn't as much as we spent on your mama. Well, so we always spend more money on your mama than we do mine. I'm tired. Now, that is the real Christmas spirit right there. Oh, that's, I know the Lord must look down and say, how pleased I am with my children and they're griping about $10 that more on one than the other. That ain't Christmas spirit. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. And set your family down and say, look, things are a little tight this year. This is all we can do. We ought to thank God we ain't in hell. Thank God for his son that loved us and died for us. Take what you get and thank God for it. That's some good advice right there. You can fool around and get yourself in debt for Christmas. You won't have to pay for next year. And it'll be Christmas again. And you still ain't got last year to pay for I seen, I seen a woman, a man, at Christmas one year, and they was out shopping, and he was looking at the thing, and she said, just, just, just get out of my way for a minute, to her husband. I left her, go out there in the car and get that. And here he just went like this right here. I felt so sorry for that poor fella. I had an aunt like that, done, my, done her husband like that, ordered him around, do this, do that, do this, do that. And he just done whatever. And my daddy looked at him and he said, I'd rather be on the chain gang to live like that. <laughs> and I'd rather be on the chain gang than a woman boss me around, tell me every move to make and everything to say and everything not to say. Uh, you say, oh, you're against women. No, I'm against mean ones. It's like mean men. Just sit down and say, look. I heard that. I heard what's your gift for Nene. I was going to buy you something in Gatlinburg. You wind up fussing, you wind up fighting, you wind up taking a, taking a, a bunch of uh, stuff that you don't even want, trying to impress your neighbors, keep up with somebody. Let me give you some advice. Figure out how much money you can spend. Go to the flea market, man. I'm not joking. I go by there sometimes. Oh, me and J-Man went by there yesterday after bus route, and it was about 1.30. We went by there and, and uh, bought him a knife. And had to take it away from him as soon as he got home. Well, he got in trouble. And then I bought Ethan some socks. And these are socks, athletic socks for basketball. And they're in the, the original wrap. They would be, they would be, they would be six ninety nine a pair anywhere you bought them in the mall. And I bought one, two, three, four, five, six pair for five dollars in the flea market. You say there's no way that I'd go to the flea market to make money. Well, it's it's because you're deceived. By the devil. There, there ain't no difference. They, you say, well, I couldn't give somebody something to come to the flea market. I could. I could. It wouldn't bother me a bit. <laughs> Amen, fellow. I wouldn't lose a bit of sleep over it. Uh, and I don't mind getting some for the flea market. Really? Really? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, no, you want to get socks, the traditional Christmas present for everybody? Socks. Don't nobody buy me no socks. I got two drawers full of them, don't want no more. I just want to put that out there. Or ties either. Don't want no ties, don't want no socks. Cash be all right. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't overspend. Save a lot. Save a lot. Sometimes you get crazy. And uh, you just remember it'll be over in a few days. And then it's back to work and you're in trouble. Number three. I'll say this and I'll be through. I said, first, stay balanced in your beliefs, decorations, celebrations, all that kind of stuff. Number two, don't overspend. Number three, honor the Lord. We as Christians ought to honor the Lord all year round. We as Christians should never do, go, be, participate in anything that dishonors our Lord. And all God's people hollered. That's right. Don't overspend and honor the Lord. Here's, here's my philosophy. If he ain't welcome, 
I ain't welcome. If I'm invited to a Christmas get-together and they'll say, all right, now, preacher, you can come, but leave your religion at home, I'll say, see you around, buddy. I ain't got time to go to that place. I don't want to go nowhere where the Lord Jesus Christ isn't welcome. And I'm going to tell you something else. They're not going to come to my house and dishonor him either. Now, if you work somewhere and people are doing things and saying things at work, that's out of your control. You're responsible for you doing right and staying right and being right. Right? I'm helping you now. I'm helping you all if you'll listen to me. This is good, solid advice. If you're at work and they're doing stuff, if they invite you to a party and say, we're going to have a Christmas party Friday night, and you know there's going to be stuff going on, there's going to be alcohol served, there's going to be all that, you say, sorry, I'm busy, I've got other things to do, I'm not interested in going nowhere where they're serving alcohol and living, living wicked music and some uh, dancer jump up out of a cake or some fool game going on that dishonors God. You say, well, the boss expects me to be there. Tell him to jump in the lake. Do him like Harvey Weinstein, whatever his name is. If your boss puts pressure on you to do something like that, sue him for sexual harassment or whatever they're doing nowadays. Everybody and their brother is getting sued for it. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to do that. And I'll tell you something else. There's a man in my house one night, and he's sitting on the couch, and my kid's in the other room, and he was cussing. And he was cussing, and he was cussing. And he had been drinking, and he kind of finally stopped and I said, Look, I can't let you talk like that to me. You're going to have to go. He said, Did you really do that? I sure did. Now, he's kin to me. And he got mad and went up to him and I said, Look, if a man, a man is supposed to be the king of his castle at home, no matter what you've been taught or you've heard, a man is the man of his house when he's at home. You'll sit there and nod your head and say, that's right, preacher. I'm glad you took a stand. But you'll let, you'll let the TV cuss and do everything in the world right in front of your kids. Now, that's, a weird, that's a weird philosophy. Well, if a man and woman knocked on your door Friday night and they said, uh, they said, excuse me, sir, uh, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so, this so-and-so, so-and-so. She's not my wife. She's married to somebody else. I'm married to somebody else. But do you mind if we come in on your couch and commit adultery? We're just looking for a place. What would you say? Oh, you heathen! I'm a Christian! Get out of here! And you'll sit right there and watch them people take their clothes off and hop into bed with you all evening long. You know what? There's something wrong with you. There's something. Oh, oh don't get caught on me. We'll rear back and change the subject tonight. Hey, honor the Lord! You say, well, it's a good movie. It's just got that one part in it. That's okay. I'll give you a good glass of water, just one little bit of poison in it. Enough to kill you. The devil knows what he's doing. He'll put that one little bit in there to pervert your mind, corrupt your mind, and get you thinking bad thoughts about people you work with. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. That means go to church. Honor God. If you if you go out of town to visit your family for Christmas and everything, I understand that. I'm not against that. Really, I'm not. I ain't stupid. But if you're not, then you, well, I expect you to be here. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I don't think we're going to lay out of church just because it's Christmas. I've even heard people say, we're going to have church on Christmas? What kind of a thinking is that, man? That's the whole reason we have Christmas, to celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we thinking, people? Man said, well, I can't go to church. Thanksgiving. Somebody messed up. Don't give wicked, worldly gifts. I know a pastor. They had, a, I guess, some kind of party. For his, and the women in the church were giving the pastor's wife wicked gifts. That I don't even mention. That's the sad state. Independent, I guess independent, Baptist church. And they all... Go have these little parties and laugh and snigger and giggle. And go home and watch 50 more shades of filth and manure. Give gifts that honor the Lord. Not wicked or worldly gifts. Here's what they give the Lord. Gold, 
frankincense, myrrh. Gold represents his deity, the king. Frankincense represents his priesthood. Frankincense was the prayers. Frankincense is like, like smoke going up. That's a picture of our prayers to God as a priest. And the myrrh represents the suffering of Christ. Myrrh is mine in bitter perfume. Beams the light of Nazarene. Sorrow and sighing, bleeding, dying, stilled in the stone cold tomb. You know, I remember when I was singing that when I was little. I had no idea what they're singing about. That myrrh represents his suffering as, as, a, as a, a sinner a, a, in our place, a sinner's place. That frankincense represents his priesthood. The prophet represents the myrrh, and the king represents the king. Honor your family with godly. Give them, give them handles, Messiah. I give out two or three copies of it this morning. Raise the level of our musical taste in this country that's in the gutter. Just because your flesh likes music, don't make it right. My flesh likes some music that ain't right. I heard something the other day, brought back memories from a long time ago, and my flesh just pulled me to, I felt it. Brother Daddy, that's right. My wicked flesh still liked it. And in my spirit said, no, 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 no. That'll not help me. That'll not. All things might be lawful, but all things are not expedient. There might be some music you can listen to that ain't really sinful or satanic, but it sure ain't encouraging you to live for God and helping you. Why not put something in there that'll help you live for God? Worship. Witness. Honor the Lord. I hope every one of you has a happy Merry Christmas. <laughs> really, I mean it. It can be the best time of year. We're going to get together over at Carrie's and eat and have fun, fellowship, Lord willing. And then we'll take a guitar and sometimes we'll go around the community. Those people that live around them over at the lake, man, we blew some of them's mind. There's some big shops live over there. We went and knocked on the door and when it opened the door, we'd be standing out there singing Silent Night. And away in a manger like a bunch of nerds. And I said, but it, it was fun. We got a blessing doing that. We got a blessing doing that. We'll be going Christmas caroling, Lord willing. We'll be going over here to rest home. We'll be having our Christmas. It's a good time of year just to enjoy the Lord and fellowship. And just don't go crazy. And lay out of church and go to wicked parties and stuff like that. That's a Christian view of Christmas. Let's stand and bow our heads.